Hello and namaste. My name is Brandon and welcome to the next video in my series on basic time series. In this video, we will learn about a new forecast accuracy measure called the Symmetric Mean Absolute Percentage Error or SMAPE for short. I hope you find it helpful. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get started. So these first few slides I will go through pretty quickly because they are repeats of every video in this playlist. So I'm not sure if you've seen those, so I'll go through them nonetheless. So the data we are using is the Nigeria GDP per capita from the year 2000 to the year 2020. And we can see there on the table on the left, and then graphically it looks like this. It almost doubles from the year 2000 up to 2014, and then flattens out a bit. And the ultimate question we are asking is, how might we approach making a forecast for the year 2021? So what we've been doing is using the naive forecast up at this point. And of course, in future videos, we will examine more advanced forecasting techniques, but we start with the naive because it is the simplest. And of course the naive forecast is just the entire time series shifted forward in time by one period. So the forecast for the next period is just the actual value for the current period. You can kind of see how that works. Then we find forecast errors. You can see those over there on the right. So the forecast error is the actual value minus the forecast value. So in the case of the year 2001, it's 1499 minus 1451. We do that all the way down the column. We can say that we have positive forecast errors in the first two thirds of the series and then negative forecast errors in the last third of the series. So always examine your forecast errors. So graphically, they look like this. As I mentioned, all the forecast errors about two thirds down the time series are positive, And then we have negative forecast errors for about the last third or so. And why is that? Well, here we can see that the actual values are above the forecast values. And then down here on the right, the actual values are below the forecast values. And we will briefly talk about why that is here in a minute. But first, always know your errors. Forecast errors create a new derivative time series that can be a treasure trove of information for the analyst, which is you. By looking at just the naive forecast errors, you should be able to reverse engineer in your mind how the underlying time series looks. In fact, many forecasting techniques do this very thing under the hood. So patterns in the naive forecast errors can reveal trend, seasonality, inflection points, and so on. Finally, examining naive forecast errors can help in the selection and interpretation of more advanced forecasting techniques. So always start at the basic level of the naive forecast. It can tell you a lot because it is so simple and then you can move on from there. So here's what the graph looks like for the actual data in the green line. Again, we can see it started around $1,500 per person in the year 2000, went up to around $2,500 or more around the year 2014, 2015, and then flattened out a bit. Now, using the naive forecast, the entire thing just shifts over one time period. So it's almost a mirror image of itself just shifted right one time period. And remember, we talked about the forecast errors. A series of positive naive forecast errors, which are under forecasts, indicates an upward trend in the series. As you can see there, the forecast cannot keep up with the actual values because of the upward trend. And then the reverse is true on the right side. So a series of negative naive forecast errors, which are under forecasts, indicates a downward trend in the series. In this case, because the forecast cannot keep up with the downward trend in the actual data. SMAPE concept overview, sort of the meat of this video. The first thing to know is that there are multiple versions of SMAPE. There are three or four, at least, different versions of this forecast error measure. The one called Armstrong, or cited as Armstrong, is the original, and that's what we'll use in this video. Keep in mind, if you use SMAPE or do more research into it, you will probably come across multiple versions, the latter of which claim to make the original better. But the R package metrics uses the original version. So we're gonna be using that in this video, and we might explore the other ones in later videos. And actually in the metrics package, it's just the SMAPE function. Now in SMAPE, it's a bit weird because when you see the formula, you'll see that the forecast error is flipped. 
instead of actual minus forecast, it's forecast minus actual. But we'll be taking the absolute value of that difference. So really in practice, it doesn't really matter. But I'm just pointing it out here that when you see it, it's gonna look different than what you might see in other formulas. So SMAPE is the forecast error as a proportion of the midpoint between the actual values and the forecast value. The average or the midpoint between the actual and the forecast for a given time period. This is the symmetric part of symmetric mean absolute percentage error. Therefore, SMAPE is a relative and ultimately will be a percentage measure of forecast error, just like its sibling, MAPE. Now, like other forecast accuracy measures, it can have division by zero issues, and some versions of this are biased. So when I said up above, there are multiple versions of SMAPE, a lot of those multiple versions try to remedy some of these issues. They all look very similar, you know, minor differences here or there. So some of these later versions of SMAPE try to make these issues better by using slightly different formulas. So here we will graph three lines or three time series, the actual, the forecasted values, and the SMAPE symmetrical values. So the green line here we've already seen, that is the GDP per capita, those are our actual values. The pink line here are our forecasted values. We've seen that before. Now here is the SMAPE value right down the middle. So at each point in time, once we actually have forecast values to use, the SMAPE value is right in the middle. So if you look at each year along this time series, that blue SMAPE line will be right between the actual and the forecast, regardless of which is on top. It always goes right down the middle. So SMAPE uses the midpoint or the average, same thing in this case, of the actual and forecast values as the measure by which the forecast error is compared. So what we're saying is, what proportion or percentage of the actual plus forecast average, that midpoint, is represented by the forecast error? So what we're going to have is a fraction where the forecast error is on top and then the midpoint or the average of the actual and the forecast values are on the bottom. So here we have an area graph that represents the SMAPE forecast error percentage as we proceed across the time series through time. Here in the blue, we have the absolute error. So we can see here on the second period where we had actual and forecasted values that our absolute error peaked at around 10%. Then it sort of flattened out around 5% over the next, you know, nine, 10 years, and then it decreased further. Well, why? Remember the graph? Well, the graph of the time series flattened out. And therefore what happened is that the actual and the forecast got closer and therefore the absolute error decreased. So look at this as a whole, it looks like this. So of course the 100% represents all the potential error that could be in SMAPE, but the absolute error represents just that numerator that is in that whole fraction that we'll see here in a second. And speaking of, here is the formula. This is not as bad as it looks, so we'll walk through it step by step. First we have make forecasts for each period, which is obvious. Then we subtract the actual value from the forecast value for a time period. We can see that's the F sub T minus A sub T. Then take the absolute value of the difference in step two, and that is our numerator. Then sum the actual value and the forecast value for a time period, that is A sub T plus F sub T. Then we divide by two. In this case, it's the midpoint or the average, which is the same thing. This is the denominator. Then we divide the numerator and the denominator, and that will give us a decimal value. Then we repeat that for each time period across the time series, divide by the number of forecast errors or multiply by the reciprocal of the number to get a mean decimal value. And then finally, we can multiply by 100 to obtain a percentage. So symmetric mean absolute percentage error means that SMAPE is always reported as a percentage. Now note that SMAPE makes comparisons of forecasting methods easier and more useful because it standardizes the errors using this actual plus forecast average as baseline. 
So it is similar to other forecast accuracy measures where we use some sort of baseline, but in this case, it's the average or the midpoint between the actual and the forecast. So the time series units no longer matter, but keep in mind though, that the real implications of the error may or may not be meaningful. So here in this table, we have each step written out explicitly. We can see that we have our actual values such as GDP column, our forecast column, forecast error, then we have the numerator of SMAPE, that's in the orange column. Then we have the denominator of SMAPE, that's the pink column. And then we have the actual division of those, that's the last column. So here we have our SMAPE formula. We can see how it corresponds to the table over on the left. So all we're doing here is we're taking the F sub T minus A sub T absolute value column, dividing that by the a sub t plus f sub t divided by two column, and then we get the decimal over in the final column. And then all we do is take the average of that last column. And when we do that, we get an SMAPE of 3.66%, which is the same thing we would get in R if we use the metrics package, which I'll make a video about here soon. All right, so here is our Nigeria GDP per capita forecast accuracy matrix. We finally have all five columns filled out for the five most commonly used forecast accuracy measures. So remember, we're using a naive forecast here. That's the only forecast method we've learned. We will learn other forecast methods in future videos, actually in the next video probably. Remember that in general, the goal is to minimize the forecast error for the known time series, then use that forecast method or methods to make forecasts for future unknown values. Now, not all forecasting and evaluation methods are appropriate or even possible for data with certain characteristics. For example, data or errors that have negative and or values of zero. Always watch out for division by zero in these formulas. It can be an issue for many of them. As we can see in the top row of this matrix, evaluation methods are sometimes in different units. So we could have the original units, which we have for MAE and RMSE. That's in actual dollars. Scaled, which we have for maze. So remember, maze is a forecast accuracy measure where we're scaling the errors based off the MAE of the naive forecast. So actually in maze, the 7655 is the denominator. Or we can have percentages. So MAPE and SMAPE are obviously percentages. Also note that MAPE and SMAPE are pretty close. Therefore, comparisons of forecast error occur within a method or between methods that use the same unit or scale. So that means that in general, we would go down a column here to see which forecast method produced the best value. If we're going across columns, we'll use measures that have the same scale or value. So in the naive forecast, we could compare MAE and RMSE. We could compare MAPE and SMAPE and maze kind of stands on its own. So that's how we compare these measures. Now it's very common for methods to disagree about which is the best method for forecasting. Forecast method A could be the best or method B could be the best, depending on which column we're looking in here. So it isn't always cut and dry. It will really be the case where a forecast method, let's just say forecast method C in this case, wins across all five columns. That's very uncommon. Just keep in mind, you'll have to use some judgment when deciding which forecast method or methods to use. Okay, that wraps up this quick video on forecast accuracy, the symmetric mean absolute percentage error or SMAPE for short. But I hope you found this video very helpful. I thank you very much for your time and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.